Me, I got a motherfucking hot ass beer. We in the motherfucking studio. We're gonna grab the rap game and dig deep in the booty hole. Before South Park Mexicans swept the 2000 Houston Press Music Awards with tracks like You Know My Name, paving the way for other Latino hardcore rappers. I walk, gotta teach myself to crawl. I started off small, now I'm stronger than the law. Before SPM worked with Little Rashid, Low G, and founded his label Dope House Records, bringing his estimated net worth to five million dollars. For, for all children, you know, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to do my thing. I, God put me here for something. Before South Park Mexican made headlines in 2002 when he was charged with sexual assaulting his daughter's nine-year-old friend and sentenced to 45 years in jail. That God's going to use this situation to, to save me from, from what I was. Before SBM continued to cause controversy when he kept releasing albums and even music videos from behind bars. South Park Mexican came from a broken home and was moved around to a bunch of different schools as a kid. His siblings were six years older than him, helping SPM grow up quick and learn how to navigate the streets. But after a dope deal gone wrong and the birth of his daughter, he'd have to take the skills he picked up hustling and try them in a new game. What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of South Park Mexican prior to fame, here for you on Before They Are Famous. We've covered other Houston artists including DJ Screw, be sure to check that one out. But in the meantime, let us know in the comment section down below who you want me to document next. Come on man, come on roll with us. South Park Mexican was born Carlos Coy on October 5th, 1970 in Houston, Texas. His mother dropped out of school to marry his father Arturo who was in the Marines. His siblings Sylvia and Arthur Jr. were 6 years older than him and had a big part in raising little Carlos. Not long into the marriage their parents divorced forcing the kids to move around a lot and go to several different schools. One of which was Welch Middle School where Carlos first started playing music. From there they would moved to a town that would later become part of Carlos' stage name and became an even more famous TV show. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Buscan trabajo? ¿Trabajo? Sí. No se hagan trabajar, sí. Yes, Carlos was now living in an area of South Houston called South Park. Luckily, the show was a good 20 years away from coming out, so the Hispanics that lived there had some time before they'd had to put up with jokes, you know, all the time. There's a heap of Mexicans out there who want nothing more than to sneak past our border, and we gotta stop them! While at Woodson Middle School, he met Brad Jordan, who would go on to become the rapper Scarface. Carlos got caught committing his first crime by the age of 10, and would continue to hustle as he got older. He graduated and went to Milby High School, but his heart and attitude from the streets didn't translate well in class. <laughs> He was expelled in his first year for assaulting a female student and after went to an alternative school. He spent years trying to get past the ninth grade but finally gave up and dropped out when he was 17. He gave school one more try and tried to get his GED hoping to get into a business degree at college. He actually managed to get into San Jacinto Junior College but ended up failing all his classes. Pretty much raised in a fucked up environment. Hey, school isn't for some people and Carlos gave the straight and narrow a go for a while. Working for minimum wage selling perfume door to door at a chemical plant, it was hard, it was thankless work and after his skin broke out in rashes Carlos decided to stick with dealing crack. The money was good but after the birth of his daughter and a deal gone wrong, Carlos knew he needed a new career. Because drugs are bad, okay. He then pulled a 180 and gave Christian rap a go. Now I'm not sure how Jesus would feel about this, you know the guy slings crack. But I can't imagine he'd be too pleased. It turns out others were just as confused by the choice, making Carlos feel like an outsider in the genre. In 94, he changed up the content and started recording under South Park Mexican. And as soon as they got a taste of that CD, as soon as they tasted that dope, they wanted more of it, so they had to have the whole CD, you know. He was determined to make it even though he had never rapped before, but he did have enough money to get some distribution going. The next year, he and his brother started their own label, Dope House Records, and SPM released his first album, Hill Wood. He'd work hard pushing his CDs for the next two years, but didn't get too far off of it. Finally, in 1997, he decided to try releasing a new album, and in a few months, he had Hustle Town ready to go. 
Out in March of 1998, his new hardcore style was a hit in the underground Houston rap scene. Carlos was driven and kept his fans happy by pumping out more content, with his third album Power Moves The Table getting noticed in mainstream media. Then in November 1999, he released his next album, The Third Wish, to rock the world, with his strongest lead single yet. The wagon, he's still sagging, blow more smoke than puff the dragon. High So High became SPM's first single to chart on the Billboard and had major labels scrambling to sign on the Houston rapper. Universal Music gave him half a million to co-sign his label and took his distribution to a whole new level. As for the rest of the story, well, that's where we end things because this is before they're famous. If you want to know more of the story, be sure to request it in the comments down below. That's where we will do an after they're famous to talk about his incarceration. My name is Michael McCredden and we do all sorts of celebrity bios here, so be sure to browse around, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. <sighs> Alright, bye.